Stick Indians are a mysterious and dangerous people whose general habitat range from the lofty forest regions of the Cascade Mountains to the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains. They are known by many names, as many as the tribes who recount the tales of these devious creatures. To the Yakima in the Cascade Mountains, they are known as the Steyahama. The Arapaho people call them Hisasitahi, while their neighbors in the northwest, the Nez Pierce, named them the Itzteyaha. And while I cannot find their native given names, these stick Indians, or simply little people, are also known to the Omaha, the Oto, the Crow, the Hidatsa, the Lakota, and the Wishayena Band of Sioux. These little people, stick Indians, are a mysterious and dangerous people whose general habitat are the lofty regions of the Northwest. They haunt the tangled timber falls, which serve them as a domicile or lodge. They range to be as large as an ordinary Indian among the Yakima, all the way down to being no more than 18 inches tall among the Sioux. Their language is the mimic of notes of birds and animals. Nocturnal in habitat, they sleep or remain in seclusion during the day, and consequently are seen only on very rare occasions. It is under the cover of darkness that they perform the act which has fastened upon them the odious appellation of Stick Shower. It is then that they thrust sticks through an opening of the teepee or hunter's lodge, or shower sticks upon belated travelers to the camp. The Indian who is delayed or lost from the trail is very apt to receive their attention. He may hear a signal, perhaps a whistle ahead of him. Should he follow the sound, it will repeat for a time. Then he will hear it in the opposite direction, along the path which he has just passed. Let him turn back. It will only be to detect the mysterious noises elsewhere, leading to utter bewilderment. When erased with dread, or overcome by exhaustion and sleep, it is then that the stick Indians scores a victory. Regaining his head, or waking him from slumber, the wanderer is more than likely to find himself stripped of all clothing, perhaps bound and trussed with leather thongs, to be stolen away into the forest. In 1954, Lucy Armstrong and Nez Pierce shared her stories of the stick people that her father and an elder passed down to her. The story in its entirety is in Ella Clark's book, Indian Legends from the Northern Rockies, on pages 50 to 51. According to Armstrong, the stick Indians wore deerskins wrapped around their bodies and lived deep in the woods. In this, it is similar to the stories of the Arapaho, who say that the little people live today deep in the remote Wind River Mountains. She said that the stick Indians could make themselves invisible by rubbing themselves with a certain type of grass, though at other times they would remain visible. They would hoot like owls and howl like coyotes, so that it was difficult to tell the stick Indians apart from wild animals. The Arapaho and Nez Pierce claim that the stick Indian was extremely strong, Armstrong said that an old white man reported that a stick Indian stole his sheep and their calves. He had told her father that he had caught the little man with a calf under each arm and that he was too strong for the sheep herder to do anything about the thievery. For the Arapaho and Crow, the modern sightings of these creatures are when the tribal members are out in the remote Wind River Mountains in hunting camp. In Armstrong's father's case, he was a boy at a hunting camp with his aunt and uncle when a storm blew up. His uncle told him to cover his face because a strange visitor was coming. However, the curiosity of the children is great and he peeked. The visitor was a little man with very small eyes and a wrinkled face. He had long hair uncombed and he wore nothing but a deerskin wrapped around his waist and hanging down to his knees. His uncle fed the visitor and the little man left with his deer meat and some salmon. As punishment, her father's face was swollen in the morning. One of the earliest written records of these elusive creatures was recorded in 1804 when the Lewis and Clark expedition stayed for a time with a band of the Wishiyena Sioux on the Vermilion River in modern-day South Dakota. On August 25th, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark and ten other men traveled about nine miles north of the river's junction with the Missouri River to see the Mountain of the Little People. Lewis wrote in his journal that the Little People were, quote, Devils, with very large heads, about 18 inches high, and very alert to any intrusions into their territory. The Sioux said that the devils carried sharp arrows, which could strike at a very long distance, and that they killed anyone who approached their mound. 
The little people so terrified the local population, Lewis reported, that the Omaha, Oto, and Sioux would not go near the place. The Lakota people came to live near the Spirit Mound, after which the Wishiana Sioux have a story no more than 250 years old, which describes how a band of 350 warriors came near the mound late at night and were nearly wiped out by the ferocious little people. Those who survived the deadly encounter were crippled for life. The Crows described these little people as standing no more than 18 inches high. Despite their small stature, their strength was legendary, and it is reported that they could kill an elk with their bare hands and carry it away with the head slung over their shoulder. They could rip a horse's heart out, and they were seen as fierce and formidable warriors as well as highly territorial. They were known as being mischievous troublemakers, stealing children, food, medicine, and tobacco, as well as very vengeful, seeking to destroy people and their families for the smallest perceived slight. It was likely this fierce reputation that kept other potential enemy tribes at bay, and indeed there are tales of enemy tribes being driven back by the little people, such as a time when the Cheyenne and Sioux arrived to be driven out by the hundreds. Although the little people were seen as ferocious and somewhat beastly, they were said to have high intelligence, possessing the ability to fashion stone arrowheads when the crow could only fashion ones made of bone. The holy men of the tribes would make offerings to them at medicine rocks. Offerings to the stick people, such as beads, cloth, arrows, knives, or tobacco, were seen as essential to anyone daring to travel through the mountains where they lived. To not do so meant certain injury or death. Offerings could also convince the stick Indians to provide plentiful luck in hunting or fishing. It is said that though the stick men go by different names and come to people in different shapes that there is some regularity in their appearances. They generally come as either sticks which blend in with the trees or the ground until you come upon them, or they can visit as an animal, as either a large deer or a small moose which can move incredibly quick for how awkwardly it seems to be hunched on its legs. They appear as pale or white animals, and though they usually do this to intimidate men and women, they are hungry beings who feast on the unwary. Seeing a stick man, one may be haunted for years, or their entire life afterwards, but in some cases it is considered good luck, as if a stick man is uninterested in you. It means that you have powerful ancestors surrounding you. A universal element of the legend is that the stick Indians reproduce by stealing away wayward children, or if the opportunity presents itself to surround a pregnant squaw, rip open her stomach, and take the child inside to be raised as their own. You can usually anticipate the arrival of a stick man, as the entire forest will go quiet around you for as long as you are in the vicinity, and sometimes they will speak to you and to each other. They sound like a raspy whisper mixed with the rattling of dry willow branches. One may also hear commotion in the distance as the laughter of children or a far-off party-like atmosphere. The purpose of this commotion being always to lure you towards their dwellings. Once hopelessly lost, alone in the woods at night, the panicked and desperate traveler will go running towards the existing sights and sounds and into the clutches of these stick Indians. Far from being a legend of the past, many Indians believe the malevolent effects of these creatures haunt us to this very day. Near the Black Hills of South Dakota sits one of the largest Indian reservations in the country, Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, home to the Oglala Lakota tribe. Pine Ridge has a long history of trauma. It's the site where hundreds of Lakota Indians were killed during the Wounded Knee Massacre, and it's currently one of the poorest counties in the United States. When it made headlines in 2015 for a spree of teen suicides, many began to suggest that darker supernatural forces were at work in Pine Ridge, citing the urban legend of Walking Sam. Walking Sam is an ancient being, according to Sioux lore, tied closely with the spiritual beings known as the Stick Indians. The Stick Indians are often described as shadow people or dark people. Even in childhood, children hear legends of these dark forces, demonic presences that will stalk the reservations and try to lure the unsuspecting victims to their doom. They have a cloud of death that hangs over them and follows them no matter where they are stalking. You may know if one is nearby because you will hear it whistling to you. If you follow the whistling, 
These beings will have the ability to paralyze you, hypnotize you, or simply drive you insane. If you are to disrespect them somehow, they would hold the grudge and seek out vengeance upon you no matter the cost. Some tribes still regard these beings with such fear and respect that they do not speak of them, and thus their full legend still isn't known outside the indigenous communities. We do, however, know that Walken Sam is believed to be one of these beings and that he's one of the most powerful of them. This particular stick Indian is believed to dwell in Wind Cave just to the west of Pine Ridge. He stalks the reservation at night, preying upon the insecure, depressed, and the lonely. Walking Sam is particularly malevolent compared to other stick people because of the way he tries to lure his victims. He will supposedly approach you and then find ways to tell you that you are not worthy of life. You will feel death in the air around you and will hear voices in your head telling you that you no longer deserve to be alive. This will continue until he convinces you to take your own life. In particular, his favorite prey is young people, even children, who are particularly susceptible to his ploys. Though he goes by other names as well, most notably the Tall Man or Stovepipe Hat Bigfoot. Most of the stories describe Walking Sam as a seven-foot figure with eyes but no mouth, sometimes wearing a stovepipe hat. When he raises his arms, one sees the bodies of previous victims hanging beneath. Although far older than any urban legend, the story of Walking Sam bears an uncanny resemblance to the modern internet sensation Slenderman. Alike in shape and size, Slenderman also preys upon the unwary, especially children. It is more than a possibility that Walking Sam is the inspiration for this creepypasta turned cryptid.